Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord. We bless your name. Thank you for the privilege of your presence. Father, the Bible says unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We know very well that our gathering this morning is unto you. Therefore, Lord, be the Lord of this gathering. Guide and direct our path in all that we do in this gathering today. Be glorified as the Lord of this gathering today. And in all things, let no one return disappointed. We commit this program to your hands, Lord of heaven. Take over it yourself and make it good on all front. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Let's proceed to our worship. Uh, this is my season. This is my time. You've given me victory. You're the sovereign one. Change your destiny. You're here right now. You're here right now. I see you. 
Praise the Lord. We thank God for that. Uh, we're going to proceed to our general prayers today. Our general prayers will be taken by Sister Lydia. Uh, let's receive her. Good morning. Today, in our general prayers, we are praying for wisdom and revelation. Today, we're praying for wisdom and revelation. In our first prayer today, we're saying, Father, I thank you today. Thank you for your unconditional love wherewith you have loved me and for your unending mercies in my life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another day. Thank you for a day that you have created for us to experience your beauty, your grace, and your unconditional love. We thank you for the love that you have loved us so unconditionally. God, your unending mercies towards us. Your word tells us that behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. And Father, we thank you because your love distinguishes us. Your love separates us. Your love causes the world not to understand because it is so special. It is so different. It is higher than we can ever imagine. So I thank you, God, for your unconditional love that no matter how far we have strayed, that God, you forgive us and you draw us close again. And then you love us even more so recklessly, so un un unconditionally. I thank you, God. Thank you, God, that your mercies are unending towards us, O oh Lord. I thank you and I honor you today. In Jesus' name we pray. In our second prayer today, we say, Holy Father, let every influence of foolishness, negative relationships, and links in and around me be brought to naught and broken off in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, your word tells us, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. And therefore, Father, today, as we come before you, we ask that, God, you help us, O oh Lord, to be able to recognize and identify all those influences that have a foolish and negative impact, even as they negatively impact our relationship with you and even our representation of you, O oh Lord. Your word tells us that we take away the dross from the silver and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer and take away the wicked from before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. God, we pray that today, Lord, that we will turn to you and that, God, we will remember that we are, you have appointed us as kings and priests unto our God to reign with him forevermore. And therefore, God, you do have a code. You do have a standard for us, oh God. And that, Lord, we should rise up to that standard, that we should separate ourselves, oh Lord, from the things that, that minimize our identity in you, oh God. Thank you, God, your word tells us, and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. So, Father, we thank you for your promise of cleansing us, O Lord, and we thank you. We ask that you help us to be able to recognize that. In our third prayer today, we say, Holy Father, I acknowledge that I need the wisdom that only you can give. Pour upon me your spirit of wisdom that I will do excellently in this life. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, you tell us that if any one of us lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abrade that not, and it shall be given him. Your word also tells us, as for this four children, God gave them knowledge and, and skills in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and in all dreams. Father God, I thank you so much for, the, for your word and all the things that you have done in the past for the saints of time ago. And Lord, I know that, Father, all those things are written for us to see and to know that you are a God that is able to raise us in wisdom and in understanding and in in, in spiritual wisdom that, God, we can do excellently in life, even as you have done for others in the past, because that is the testimony of Jesus Christ, that what you have done for others, you can do for us. And so, Father, today I, pr I acknowledge that I need your wisdom, oh God, that only you can give me that level of wisdom, oh Lord, to do excellently in life, 
to be set aside, to be a standard that others can look upon, O oh Lord. And so, Father, today I ask, my God, that even as your word has told us to ask for wisdom, I ask for that wisdom that only comes from you. I ask, O oh God, that you may give me so liberally, O oh God, that I may be set aside just for you, O oh God, because God, even those around us that see us doing excellently in life, they will know that it was not our own wisdom that brought us to that place, even as your disciples, O oh Lord, when men looked upon them, they knew they were unlearned and that they could only have got such wisdom because they were with you, Lord Jesus. And so I pray the same for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. In our fourth prayer, we will say, Father, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of my heart be enlightened to know the hope of your calling and the riches of your glorious inheritance and the greatness of your power towards me in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, we ask today that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Father, let the eyes of our hearts be enlightened, O oh God. Father, open our eyes to see the hope of your calling, the reason that you call us, the, the, the reason that we should trust in you and have confidence in the calling. Father, and even to be able to see the riches of your glorious inheritance, O oh God. Father, that God, we that we may be able to experience the greatness of the power of your power towards us, O oh Lord. Your word tells us that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to his working the working of his mighty power lord jesus we do seek to experience all these things oh god and they only come even by wisdom and revelation oh god that, Father, as we learn your word, that, God, you will infuse your wisdom in us, that Holy Spirit in us will reveal that word as it's spoken to us, as we read, as we study your word, that, God, we will begin to be enlightened, oh God, so that our walk in you can be filled with hope, oh God, the hope that you have called us with, oh God, that we may begin to understand that the riches of your glory is in us, even your saints, that we are your inheritance, O oh Lord, and that God, O oh Lord, that we may begin to, to, to display the power of God that has been given to us who believe according to your mighty working power, even the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you and I honor you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. In our fifth prayer today, let us pray and say, Holy Father, I ask that you fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so that I may walk worthy of you, fully pleasing you in my life. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I ask God that you fill me today with your knowledge, the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and in all spiritual understanding that as I walk, my walk may be worthy of you, that as I walk with you, God, that you will say every single day that I am a good and faithful servant, that I am pleasing to you, O oh God. Let me be found to be fully pleasing to you, O oh Lord. Father, may you cause me, O oh Lord, to understand you, to understand your word, to apply that God, everything that I lay my hands to do will be pleasing to you, that everything I do for you will be a sweet smelling aroma to you, oh God. Your word tells us for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all understanding and spiritual in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. 
Father God, I pray that, God, we will increase in our fruitfulness, oh God, that, Father, our fruitfulness will be pleasing to you, oh God, that, Father, it will be such a sweet-smelling aroma that every time you see us, you see us working, you see us walking, you see us conversating with others, God, that it will be a sweet-smelling aroma to you, that it will always be pleasing, God. I honor you. I thank you, God, for you are wonderful. In our sixth prayer today, we say, Holy Father, I ask that you not just give me the spirit of wisdom, but you will help me to grow continuously in wisdom so that I will not fall out of your leading in all seasons of life. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I ask that God, not only do I receive the spirit of wisdom today and the spirit of revelation and understanding, but that God, you will help me to grow continually in your wisdom, that I will not fall away from your leading in every season of my life, that every season, oh God, will be a season of fruitfulness, will be a season of, of splendor towards you, oh God. Your word tells us in Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. I pray that God, that will also be our portion, oh Lord, and that God, even your word says, and this child grew and worked strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Lord Jesus, today, I ask even for each one of us on this platform, Lord, corporately and individually, that this will be a blessing to you, oh God, that Father, we will increase, we will continue, and that God, as we walk with you, that we will not fall away, even as you say, the path, the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter, that God, we will not fade away, we will not wax cold, but we will wax strong in you, O oh Lord, that every season shall be a season of fruitfulness, of, of bringing to you, God, all of our works, that God, that bring you the glory. I thank you and I honor you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And now in our seventh prayer, we will pray, Holy Father, as you did with the children of Issachar, I ask that you give me the gift of understanding of the times, to discern times, and to know exactly what I ought to do in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, even for the wisdom that you are bestowing upon us, for the revelation, understanding, oh God, and that, Father, even as you did with the children of Issachar, who were men that had understanding of the times, that knew what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. God, I pray today that that shall be our portion, O oh Lord. Even as we live in these treacherous times, O oh Lord, you have called us to be humble as doves and wise as serpents, O oh God, that, Father, we shall apply all wisdom that we have received, and that, Father, we shall be discerning of the times that we live in, so that, God, no matter what comes at us, O oh Lord, we shall continually be like that tree that's planted by the rivers of water that does not wither, but continues to bear fruit, O oh God, that no matter what the seasons are and the times are and how tough they are, O oh Lord, that, Lord, we shall be discerning to know the right words to say, to speak a word in season to, the, to that weary soul, to speak the right words, to bring peace to the hurting, to bring healing to the sick, but also to know how to navigate the, the times that we live in, oh God, so that God, we continue to advance your kingdom, regardless of what is ahead of us, oh Lord, that Father, we shall continually be on the offense and not always be defensive, oh Lord, but the Lord, we shall continue to offend and to advance the kingdom of God so that Lord your, your kingdom may advance and that God you may reach every part of the world as you have commissioned us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus is Lord. So to you that hear it, prayer of let's come. Father we thank you for the privilege that we can even lift up our voice to pray to you also the privilege of us that prayer in Jesus name. Now we'll proceed to our scriptural reading this morning. Uh, we'll be reading from Psalm 121 uh, verses 1 to 8 
that's a very popular term, term one to L1 versus one to each. And uh, this uh, constant will be really important. The constant Sorry, I just got it. 121, 1 to 8. Okay. Psalm 121, 138 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills for whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Verse three, he will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that kept it, thee will not slumber. Verse four, behold, he that kept it, Israel, shall neither slumber nor sleep. Five, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand verse six the sun shall not smit it thee by day nor the new the moon by night seven the lord shall preserve thee from all evil he shall preserve thy soul eight the lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from the time forth and even forevermore Amen. 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 So I will lift up my hands to the hill. But when it comes, my help. My help comes from the Lord. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, send me a uh, help. For vain is the help of man. May the help of God locate us this morning. Let's receive the charge from Pastor Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much. Let us pray. Oh, our Lord, our maker, our helper, our king, our strength, our refuge. Father, this morning we come before you in appreciation of all that you have helped us with. We come before you as the king, the king of that kingdom of God. You are the king of the kingdom of God and you help your children. Father, this morning we want to bring your word. We want to remind ourselves of your power of help that is available to us, that you help us. Lord, we ask that this morning you use me to bring your word to us, oh God. Use my lips to bring your word to your children this morning. Empower your word to have a free course in all of us, our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much for this morning. And I want to thank Pastor Tunji for the opportunity to bring the word of God to the saints of God on this platform. I do not take this opportunity lightly. So, Pastor, thank you. Um, as you know, we are talking about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And I want us to, this morning, um, remind ourselves that God provides for all his children. In the kingdom of God, God is the king. And the king provides and the king helps his children. He is our helper. As children of kingdom, we receive help from God. We receive help from God. And that is one thing that I really want us to remember that. I don't know where you are, the number of challenges you are facing, the mountains you are climbing in your life. But this morning, the word of God to us is that that king, the king of that kingdom of God, that king helps his children. You know, David is basically making a very bold declaration here in Psalm 121. You know, it's a prayer, it's a declaration of faith, and it's also describing, you know, his relationship to God, his expectation of God. He said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help. It's a very strong statement. His help comes from God. In some other versions, I will lift up my eyes onto the heavens. Where cometh my help? And this morning, wherever we are in life, I want us to be able to lift up our head onto God, onto the heaven, and say, Father God, my help comes from you. Verse 2 said, my help comes from the Lord. 
my help. My help doesn't come from my, my job. My help doesn't come from my strength. It doesn't come from my family. It doesn't come from my connections. It doesn't come from, you know, the strength of my, 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 my mind and my education and my certificate. He said, verse two, my help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord. Verses that I will not suffer, that he will not suffer my food to be moved. He that keepeth thee. So he said, God keepeth you and I. He keeps us. He's the one who keeps us. And the keeper provides for, his, for, for the subjects. A keeper gives unto the people. A keeper helps them. He fights their battles for them. So God is our keeper. He said, he that keepeth thee, he God that keepeth thee will not slumber. He will not slumber. Slumber means, you know, he will not just, just be there and things will, will happen to you. No, he will keep you. Verse 1 said, behold, he that keepeth the Israel. So he said, behold, God who keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. These are very strong declarations about God. Verse 4, the, the verse 5, the Lord is thy keeper. God is our keeper. The king of kings is our keeper. The Lord is our shade upon the right hand. The Lord is our shade. The Lord is our strength. The Lord is our anchor. The Lord Jehovah is our everything. I know a lot of times we find ourselves, you know, like we're in the middle of the ocean and we're just swimming by ourselves. So we are paddling this boat all by ourselves. And, and you know, and the waves are against us and, and life. Is, I mean, you talk to people and they will tell you the challenges, the mountain of challenges that they face. And they have struggled. They have done everything they can on their own. This morning, the Lord is telling you and I that he is our helper. He said, God is our helper. The Lord is our helper. You know, what if, if you read Psalm, 40, um, Psalm 46, Psalm 46, 1 to 5, and I'll read that very quickly. Psalm 46, 1 to 5. He said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46, 1 to 5. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He didn't say, you know, he helps us after the trouble has come and gone. You know, he doesn't say he helps us when after we've had all the bruises and we said he's a very present, he's real-time present help to us. God is our refuge and strength. That king, that king of the kingdom of God, the king of the kingdom, the kingdom in which all of us are part of, that king, he is our helper. He is our helper. He is our helper. God is our helper. God is our present helper. He is a present, God is our refuge and strength. You know, he said, God is our refuge and God is our strength. So he just doesn't give us strength. He is our strength himself. You know, it's different from, we say, oh, God will give me strength. But he is saying, God is our strength. God himself is our strength. Imagine, you know, God being the strength in your body. God being your strength. He's, he does everything. Your strength does everything. God is you and I, our strength. He said, as I said, therefore will not we fear, verse 2, Psalm 46, verse 2. Therefore, we will, therefore will not we fear, though the earth is removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, verse 4, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that rightly early. God shall help her and that rightly early. Here the psalmist is explaining all the challenges that he is facing. Oh, wow. He says, you know, the waters, the waters roar. He says, verse 3. Though the waters therefore roar and be troubled, the mountains shake, you know, with the swelling thereof. The, you know, the, I mean, there is so much chaos. There are so many problems. The, you know, the, so the mountains of problems, you know, just the mountain, just imagine a mountain shaking with swelling, you know, the waters are roaring in your life. All these challenges are happening. But I said, there is a king. There is a king. His name is God. He's our helper. Verse 5, he said, God is in the midst of her. God is with you and I. And we shall not be moved. And said, God shall help her. And that's rightly early. You know, whatever is our situation, we can go before our king, the king of the kingdom of God, for help. 
The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You know, Philippians 3, verse, uh, verse uh, Philipp Philippians 4, 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, we have, we have God and we have, you know, all his backing of strength in this life. All we need to do is to go before him. You know, when Jesus Christ was arrested, going to be, uh, uh, going to be uh, uh, crucified, and you know, and, and 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 Peter, you know, took his sword out and slashed the ear of of one of the the, the, the soldiers. Jesus Christ said, "Do don't do that." He said, "If I need to fight, if I need to fight presently, I will ask my Father, and He will send me twelve legions of angels." That is strength. He said, "If I need to fight." I will ask my father, and my father will send me 12 legions of angels to fight for me. So God is truly our helper. We all know that by a lot of times, you know, when the challenges of life come, right, when the struggles come, when we have prayed and prayed and prayed, and it seems that the solution is not coming. You know, our faith may wane, we may, we may grow cold, we may grow weak, but this morning God is reminding you and I that he is our God. He is the king. He is our strength. He gives us strength, and he is also our strength, and he is our helper. You know, our God is our helper. In all situations, God is our helper. And I want us to be very remindful of this and go before him this morning and say, oh, God, Jehovah, thank you that you are my helper. Thank you that I can lift up my eyes onto the hills where comes my help. My help doesn't come from, from, from my financial resources. My help doesn't come from my job. My help doesn't come from my spouse. My help doesn't come from anywhere else. God himself, you are my helper this morning. I remember one time Pastor Tunji said, you know, the most powerful shortest prayer is God help me. God help me. Just that short, simple prayer, God help me. You know, Hebrews 13, verse 6. Hebrews 13, verse 6 is that, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hebrews 13, 6. Surely God is my helper. He says, so that we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what men shall do unto me. God is my helper. God is my helper. I, I, this morning, I just want to remind ourselves, God is my helper. My God is my helper. God helps his children. God helps his children. God helps his children. God helps his children. He is our helper. He will not let our, he will not suffer our food to, to be moved. God is our helper. You know, Psalm 54, verse 4. Psalm 54, verse 4. He says, behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. God is my helper. You know, there is, you can go through the Bible everywhere. And the Bible says, God is my helper. God told Israel many times that I, I am your helper. This morning, God is telling you and I that he is our helper. He is our helper. He is our helper. He's the one that helps us. God is the one that helps us. I don't know where you are in life. I don't know the challenges you're facing. I don't know the, you know, the, 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 the mountains that you are climbing. But this morning, I want us to go before the Lord. And lift up our eyes onto the heavens and say, God, you are my helper. God, you are my helper. My help comes from the Lord. In all my situations, my help comes from the Lord. He's the king. He is the king. I am a subject of his kingdom. I live within his kingdom. I dwell in his kingdom. I serve the king. And he is my helper. God is my helper. God is my helper. God is my helper. This morning, even as we go before the Lord, I, I just I just go before the Lord in every situation you find yourself in. In every situation you find yourself in. You say, God, you are my helper. Amen. Amen.
Lord Jesus. The cry of help and for help is one cry that God in his nature particularly from an humble soul <laughs> is not going to neglect. Remember when they said to him Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. The Bible says, and is to steal. The cry for mercy, the cry for help, will flow in the same direction. That have mercy on me, O oh Lord, for I'm weak. I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't even know what it takes to undo this anymore. He said, heal me for my bones are best. Have mercy, Lord. He said, but I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Trust in his mercy. I would say that man that trusts in God's mercy, in whose hope the Lord heeds, 
is the one that is secure, crossing his hell. But there's a river, the streams whereof can be glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Therefore, she shall not be moved. And God shall help her and that right highly. He said, come. See what is done upon the earth. He makes war to cease unto the hands of the earth. That's what the help of God can do. That's what he does. When you acknowledge your frailty, frailty and cry off to him, help me, O oh God. Then for all Judah and Benjamin and Jerusalem gather themselves together to ask help of the Lord. And when he chose to help them, they didn't need to fight. They were only carrying the spoils of war. The help of the law. He said, help us, O God, for we have no might against this great host. As you desire his help, you see amazing response from heaven. Let's always know how to call for that help. It's all humility of art, knowing that he's the Almighty. He said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on uh, whom I will, I will deliver. It's as simple as that. Don't let the devil keep condemning you. Speak God's help. Glory to God. Lord, help me. <laughs> that should not be far from your mouth. And I say to you today, as you go, the help of God goes with you. Help makes you do, or let me put it this way, help is help does things for you that in a thousand years you can be able to do. Let the help of God go with you today. Paul said, I've not received help of the Lord. I continue. Takes the help of God as we preach to be able to continue whatever it is that you are doing. I've all received help of the Lord. So receive help from Him this morning. Come before Him. Look up to Him. The Bible says they looked up to the Lord. Their faces were lighting that they knew no shame. Receive help of the Lord. What is it? It's overwhelming you. Do even know what to do? He said, he, said, he, he, he said in the psalm, have mercy on me, O Lord, consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of thy He said, lift you up. He self repositions you where they have written you off, forgotten about you. The help of God come, lift up the, the, the poor from the dogs and the beggar from the dunghill, to so set them among the princes, to so make them to inherit the truth of glory. For the pillars of the heart are the laws, and He has set the world upon them. He self does that. It's changing your story this morning. Of God. Receive his help as you go to it. Celebrate that help. Keep thanking him for that help. Thank you, Lord, for your help. Thank you, Lord, for your help. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Acknowledge that help. Reckon that that help is there with you. As you go, you keep, it keeps manifesting for you. So go in peace this morning. God will help you. <laughs> oh, God will help you. And you see, it looks as if the door is closed. God will help you. You will still go through. Receive yourself this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's remember that this program runs Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. Mountain Time. And it's our duty to keep inviting people to this platform. 
get them the link, call them. You bring them, God multiplies his grace upon your life. Let's keep inviting them and celebrate the goodness of God together. Jesus is Lord. We thank God for today. Tomorrow is another day. We look forward to it with great excitement that God who marches us always forward. He said, tell my people that they go forward. <laughs> you will always go forward. Your position notwithstanding, you will always go forward. So keep going forward because the help of God is with you. See you tomorrow. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Remember, the help of God is with you. Go in peace. Jesus is Lord.